in case you've been living off-grid like a hermit somewhere in these last couple of years, let me break the news to you. Things have not been going well for Intel. A couple weeks ago, the blue giant announced that it's laying off a further 15,000 employees and suspending dividends to shareholders after another disappointing quarterly earnings report. Intel's 13th and 14th gen chips have been in the media for supposedly suffering higher than normal failures, and in the data center, AMD continues to chip away at Intel's market share. Well, what about their gaming GPUs? Battle Mage is just around the corner, we hope, and I think it might join the ranks of the unbuyable products of 2024 ever growing list. Intel's saving grace is that AMD and Nvidia's upcoming GPUs should also suck, given what we know. Let me explain why. Our sponsor, URCDKeys.com, is having a back-to-school super sale. So if you need a Windows or Office OEM key, you should check them out now. What is an OEM key? If you buy a Windows 11 directly from Microsoft, you'll pay $139 currently, or more depending on your region. And that's for a Home Edition key. But if you buy an OEM key from URCDKeys.com, you'll only have to pay $21.80 when you use my coupon code C25. And that's for a Windows 11 Pro key. These keys work globally and you'll get them within minutes. You can pay with a credit card or PayPal. After purchasing, just go to your purchased orders page and copy the key. And then on your Windows 11 install, type in activate and enter your key in the appropriate field and click activate. Simple and quick. You can also get Office 2021 Professional Plus at less than half the price with my coupon code C25. Check the links in the video description for your cheap OEM keys today. So despite all the bad news, Intel's quarter wasn't as bad as some have been saying. While it's true that Intel stock plummeted to dumpster levels, the year-on-year -year revenues stayed the same, down just 1%, and margins are still at 35%, the same as last year. So while the growth trajectory we saw at the end of last year hasn't continued as expected, I think there are still positive signs that the company is moving in the right direction. CEO Pat Gelsinger implemented a sustainable strategy for Node leadership, and that takes time to conclude. And the company has been gradually following a strategy of sustainable financials for the long term, which also takes time and some cuts on what was a very bloated company. In good times you expand, in bad times you cut your losses, that's business. Building new fabs and a new foundry, manufacturing and supply engine is not like putting together a bunch of supermarkets. The semiconductor industry progresses at a slow pace. What worries me about Battlemage then, Intel's next generation client GPU microarchitecture is not actually Intel's execution, but rather TSMC's. It's been known for a while that the Battlemage GPUs will be on TSMC N4, you know, the same node that gave us Zen 5 and its almost flat performance gains in most desktop applications, especially gaming. If Alchemist was underwhelming on TSMC's N6 node, with even the 16GB A77 being slower than the 6650XT and the RTX 4060, so we're talking about about their competitor's 60 class, which I wouldn't even call mid-range, but more like upper entry level, launching Battle Mage on a poor node like TSMC's N4, which seems to offer very little in terms of performance uplifts, leaves one wondering if the top Alchemist GPU will even match the next generation 60 class GPUs from AMD and Nvidia. If history repeats itself, then it's likely that Nvidia's 5070 will perform around the level of the 4080, meaning the 5070 would be 200 68% faster than Intel's A77. Is anyone expecting a 268% uplift for Intel's Battle Mage compared to the A770? Right, Nvidia's 5060, or I guess the 5060 Ti, should be around the 4070 performance level, which is 65% faster than the A770. Could Battle Mage be 65% faster than Alchemist then? The latest rumors indicate that Battle Mage's first entries will have a 192-bit bus and use GDDR6, not 6X, for a maximum of 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 19 gigabit per second. This is a clear indicator of a mid-range card at best, if not an entry-level card. You might remember that when Raja was still at the company, he said that 200 watts and a single connector was the sweet spot for a gaming GPU. In fact, Raja, who obviously worked on Battle Mage, even though he's not there now, explicitly said back then that he would not follow AMD and Nvidia's strategy of ever increasing
processing power requirements for gaming GPUs, saying, and I quote, performance per watt, or delivering higher performance at lower power, is my top priority. There will always be someone with some skill who can say, I'm going to give you more juice, but my focus is lower power. Well, TSMC Zen 4 is not exactly delivering what I would call performance per watt focused improvements so far, and TSMC's N3 is even more problematic, to the point that even Nvidia is avoiding it for the moment, launching the Blackwell AI parts on N4. So B770 launching with 65 performance better performance than A770 seems highly unlikely to me. A Linux bootlog shared on Anantax forums suggests that the B770 would be slower than an RX 6800, so that's definitely slower than the RTX 4070, and would put it around the 3070 Ti territory, which could mean that it will not even be competing with AMD's next-gen top mid-range offering, and will compete at best with Nvidia's lowest 5060 card. So in terms of realistic prices that most PC enthusiasts are willing to pay, we'd be looking at the B770 at $350 to $400 maybe, at the 3070 Ti level of performance. The Radeon 8700 XT, perhaps at $550, performing at the level of the 7900 XT, but maybe with better ray tracing, and the Nvidia 5070 at $600, at the performance level of the 4080 Super. Maybe. Considering the last-gen cards that will still be on the market, you'll likely be able to purchase a 7700 XT for the same price as a B770 for the same performance, but with better drivers and AMD's growing suite of features, like FSR 3.1 and all that. So that really beggars the question. If this is indeed where we'll be at in a few months, who will Battle Mage be for? I guess if you want to get away from the duopoly that Nvidia and AMD represent, and if the games you play are well supported by Intel's drivers, something like this B770 that I'm speculating on here could be decent, if not exactly groundbreaking. But in the grand scheme of things, as a consumer, you are probably better off buying from one of the other two companies. Buying last gen 70 series seems to be the place to be in now, especially considering there's barely any performance gains to be had in each generation, except for the flagship cards. Now, there is something to consider that could, maybe, represent good news for us, and that's the fact that Intel has already powered on Panther Lake and Clearwater Forest on their 18A node, and are promising node leadership next year. Lunar Lake is also launching ahead of schedule, so it could be that Battle Mage is just a stepping stone for launching Celestial next year on 18A, with TSMC faltering and Intel getting their act together in their foundry position, they can go back to having that in-house advantage that they've missed for the last decade or so, not only designing CPUs and GPUs to take advantage of their own node advancements, but also starting to release GPUs every single year. That that would finally shake up the GPU market for sure. Let's hope Pat Gelsinger and company can pull that off. My awesome patrons would most certainly turn Intel around if given the chance, because they are just glorious, and know CPUs and GPUs better than anyone else out there. And you can be just like them by joining my Patreon for just a couple of dollars per month. That will also give you exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.